<clears throat> so this is by far um, one of the more challenging builds I did. I've been I've worked on. Um, what you guys see <clears throat> right here is a mock-up, and I'm gonna pull the camera off the tripod here shortly and kind of walk around and try to give you a little bit better perspective. Um, but I think, let's do this. Let's move this here. <clears throat> and just focus on this angle here. I think this will kind of give you a sense for where we're going. So this is uh, novel to me. Um, which is what I want. This is letting my creative energies flow here. Um, and <clears throat> so I really liked 8.0 as I talked about it. I, I love that arc. I think it turned out really, really nice. And on this one, I wanted to, to duplicate that aspect. But I wanted to add something a little different. So... Um, what you guys see here is a, I'm going to call it a dual plane arc. I don't know if that's better terminology, but that's what I'm going to use. But essentially we have the vertical sidewalls and kind of like we've seen on 7.0, 5.0 and maybe another one, I can't remember. There's this 45 degree angle that rolls into the roof line, which we have that same feature here, but of course we have this arc. So instead of a angular or a um, a flat roof line, <clears throat> we're 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 meshing kind of the best of both worlds, right? We're getting that forty-five degree angle, uh, but we're also getting the arc. Now, um, to be honest with you, this build, of course, I want it to be functional. Of course, I want it to be aerodynamic. But just like I've talked about before, uh, you know, every build has some major theme. Uh, this one's no different. It could be making it as light as possible. It could be, uh, you know, wanting some kind of features inside or some kind of look. This one is I want to have these curves define a very artistic and novel view of the camper. Um, and this is hard. I've never done this before. Um, I'm sure somebody has, but I've, I've not. I've not seen how someone else has done it. But I like it. But I do think it also fulfills some practical roles. So from an aerodynamic perspective, let's take a little closer look at the front end here. I'm going to pop this out to actually we already are at wide angle. So if you imagine. You know, this is, again, a mock-up. It's not completely done, but we're looking at the front of the camper here. Um, you know, this whole corner, which on 8.0, for example, would have been vertical straight up, is cut down, right? Now, that's going to help, from my experience of side winds, it's going to add a little bit of stability, less likely for the camper to be pushed around. But then this nice sweeping arc is also going to have a big aerodynamic function. Even though this thing is wider, we're cutting off some of the frontal surface area. Um, I mean, of course, I'm not throwing the sucker in a wind tunnel, so I'm kind of guessing a little bit. But uh, based on my past experiences and just what little bit I do know about aerodynamics, I think this is going to be a very favorable shape. Um... I'll talk about a few more practical things and I'm gonna walk you around and, and just show you how, I think how beautiful this shape is gonna be. Um, a lot of comparisons, as you guys have seen, is gonna be between this one and 8.0, just because they're kind of, 8.0 certainly has an inspirational impact on this. Um, from a dimensional perspective, this is four inches wider, which I've talked about in Ignazium. The, the length is essentially the same. It's actually technically about an inch longer because I uh, have a little bit more of a hangover in the portion that leads up to the truck cab. But, but largely speaking, it's about the same length. You guys will notice, though, um, or perhaps, uh, at its highest point, which is this center point here, it's actually three inches taller than 8.0. So... Um, from a perspective, not only 5'8", so I'm a pretty short guy, but, you know, 
you can imagine it's darn near stand up height in here now, or at least in this center section here. Uh, I, I still got to swoop a little bit. Um, I think the internal height might be like 64 inches or something like that. So we're making it a little bit taller inside, a little bit wider. Um, the highest point I moved five inches back. So in 8.0, it actually sat, you know, roughly about here. The rear, let me make sure this is all shown up in the uh, camera footage here. Yeah, it is. Okay. So the rear back here is actually, it looks a lot shorter, but is actually the same height as in Amper 8.0. I think that's a nice sweet spot. I like that height. This front junction point here is actually two inches higher than an 8.0. So we're getting a little bit bigger internals here. Um, let's 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 talk about the aesthetics of this though. I. I'm going to go, uh, let's go, this is wide angle here. We're going to kind of go both ways. Wide angle is going to distort things. I think this is sexy, though. I think these are really, really sexy lines. Um, I went back and forth in my mind a lot about whether I want that rear any taller. And obviously, I opted to keep it lower. And then when I did my initial mock-up, I didn't hate it, but I was uh, a little hesitant thinking maybe I should have went a little higher on the rear end. But, uh, man, that is just... I don't know how to say it's sexy. But just follow that line. And, yeah, it, it's a pretty dramatic duck down in the rear right back here. But, man, I think that... I think I like it. I like it. Just look at it from the side here. So you imagine if you're looking at it... Now... Obviously, this is going to be covered, and this is all a mock-up, so just kind of bear with the roughness here. But this is going to be... Hold on a second here. Sorry, I'm working with one hand here. So this is going to be roughly how that siding is going to fit. And then, of course, the, or the, the skin of this camper. And then, of course, it'll be, you know, it'll be all skinned out like normal walls on the side. But you can just kind of imagine you get that, that, that arc in the roof... That deep drop in the rear that pulls around. I don't know. I'm liking it, guys. Now, with all this being said, now, of course, I've still got to work out how it's going to come in the front cab over. But you guys can see this little spot here. Uh, I build the cab over as a modular unit that will actually slide and fit into place. So you can see from that notch there, that's how low it's going to be. So these are going to kind of arc into the cab over here. Still got to sort out some of those specifics there, but I think you can get the general gist. Um, let me go regular angle here. <clears throat> it's a little harder to see in my small garage here, but just look at that. Look at that right there. Just boom. Listen, I understand it may not be everybody's cup of tea, and that's fine, but I don't think there's anyone that could say that they, this is novel. This is This is... I've not seen anything quite like this. All right, I'm sorry. I'll stop. All right, let's uh, let's talk about kind of some of the construction thought processes here. Keep them, guys. I mean, keep in mind, guys. I'm figuring this out as I go. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that the way I'm doing it is the best way, but it is a way, and it is getting me where I want to go here. All right. So what I did for the main body is I said I need to define my rear, which I chose, as I talked about, to have the same height as 8.0. I need to determine my location and the height of my center point, which, as I said, is three inches taller. And I had to determine my end point for the main body. Of course, we're gonna have a small cab over. Now, what I did on this one is I essentially, every single column is going to be evenly spaced. Now, this is not something that I've always done on every build. So, for example, you guys see, 
I've got this weird work around here with the window. Make sure we're shot, we're aimed in on this. Let me scoot it in a little bit. You guys can see I got this wor weird work around for the window. So normally, I would have just had a column on each side of the window and made it that way. But one lesson I learned on 8.0 is I thought, and I think it's going to be true, that if I evenly space out the columns, the, the vertical poles here that, that form the walls, it might make it easier for me to get this smooth, perfect arc. One thing I learned on 8.0, and it's certainly being true here, is that you can arc the wood like this, but it tends to, on these longer runs, so in the front and the sides, not want to have as smooth of an organic arc as you want, but kind of wants to flatten out a bit. So what I decided to do to kind of remedy that is I defined my three points, and essentially, even though this window looks like it has these two columns here, the, the, the single point is this is this section on top here. And then I... And then these two columns, so there's going to be a column that goes up here and a column that goes up here. I left those out. I mocked up my arc. And then what I can do is I will position those columns just right. So, for example, on this one, this column is just going to be a little bit taller than this flat spot. Let me make sure I'm showing up here. Uh, sorry, I don't think I was. Let me zoom in here. So for example, back here, like I said, this has a tendency to want to flatten out a little bit. This is arcing pretty good, but this column that's going to go right here, now that I have this mocked up, I know it's going to be just a little taller and that's going to pull up right here and it's going to help have more of a consistent arc. And then up here, for the column that will go right here, the same thing. Now this again arced pretty good. This bottom one did not, but I will adjust this just a little higher and then hopefully that will give me that perfect smooth organic arc, which is what I'm what I'm looking for here. So from a construction um, from a construction strategy, that's what I did. I evenly spaced out the columns in the main body. I define my front, center, and rear. And then when I mocked it out, I just did those three columns, the front, center, and rear. And then these the, these two ancillary columns, which of course there's four because there's one on each side, I can, I can determine the exact height and adjust it to help smooth out and give that nice, smooth, crisp arc. Now, it required me to build this strange monstrosity here in the window but it wasn't as big of a deal as it looks. So uh, this is the center point here. Let me make sure I'm showing up here on this camera. Let's zoom in here. So for the window, this is the center point. And if you were to draw a line, this perfectly matches here. And then I just built the frame of the window around it and set it on top of there. It's actually a lot stronger than it would look like it is. Um, you know, I was thinking of an analogy, this is a bit off topic, but the frame. Um, I get a lot of comments, and it was kind of my own intuition too, that, that the bulk of the strength of the camper is going to be defined by the frame structure. And though the frame structure, uh, you know, does provide a lot of the strength, I kind of think of it as like bones in the human body, right? So yes, it, it, it defines a shape, it helps make it rigid. And it serves as an attachment point for all of your muscle, skin, tendons, and ligaments, and other tissues. But imagine if you just had a skeleton standing on its own, right? It's still going to be pretty strong, but it's going to be a little bit floppy. It's not going to have that rigidity. But imagine a body. The, the skin of this is, is whatever exterior, uh, you know, the, the plywood exterior coating, which I'm going to do on this one. Or if it was on 8.0, it would be the cedar planks. And, and then, of course, when you build out the interior and you line the interior with the foam board insulation and you build out your interior cabinets, you know, that's like adding everything else to your body, your skin, your muscles, your ligament, your ligaments, your tendons, you know, all of your internal organs. And the overall strength and mobility and shape of your body is defined by its whole. It's not defined by just your bones. Bones are important. 
But I kind of think, I don't know if that's a perfect analogy, but it helps me understand it. When I build these campers, I think of it as the same way. I'm building the skeleton right now. It's going to be rigid. It's going to be strong. But, but the real strength, the real thing that helps me stand up and move and be flexible and, and all that stuff is everything else that sits on top of my bones. I hope that's helpful to you. But that's been my experience of you know, building these from the ground up and seeing them come together. Um, so I guess in this video, um, you know, I, I really just wanted to kind of talk to you about this mock-up. Let me, let me talk a little bit about the psychology of this mock-up too. You know, if you're building a square box, which is fine, I'm not offering any criticism, like you kind of know, you can predict what's going to happen. You kind of know what's there, right? And a mock-up is not quite as important. But when you're doing something, and again, I'm not offering a criticism to, to something like that. I'm just saying that as an example. But when you're doing something that has curves, it has something that you've never done before, it has something that's hard to visualize, you know, these mock-ups are really important because you need to make sure that your original design concept is actually executionable. Um, I talk about how I envision, you know, I, I, I visualize these builds, and, and, it, and it's, it's largely accurate and predictive, but every once in a while, you know, there, there's things that I still need to, to physically put hands on to make sure that it's going to work. What I did to define these carves, curves, arcs, whatever you want to call them, is I cut, um, uh, this is poplar, and this was a big long column I bought, and I cut, I, I set my table saw to 45, and I ran it through, and, and basically just cut these inch by inch, 45 degree angled, so it's basically like a triangle shape, and, and that will, you know, when I, when I lay these, you know, this board across here, that, that will define the point where it attaches, if you guys can see that. Um, and I took a file, let's see if we can zoom, zoom in here. Now these are not permanently attached. This is just a mock-up for right now, but, but this is, I think this is kind of me defining a method here as we are. I took a file and flattened this out and I used a pan head screw. This is actually just a Craig, um, for a Craig jig. And I drove it in there to hold this flat against here. Uh, these will be taken off, and I will, you know, add uh, my additional two columns, and I'll tidy some stuff up, and 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 all that kind of thing. Um, but uh, uh, you know, roughly speaking, I had to figure out well, how's this going to be done because I've never done this before. But uh, uh, all these columns are all laminated, just like I talked about in the tub. Um, some of these I, I kind of pre-supported when I was running these across. But uh, anyways, guys, in this video, uh, the, but the psychology, sorry, I got distracted there. The psychology of what I'm saying is, especially if you're doing something that's unusually shaped, there's nothing wrong with doing a mock-up. I'm actually going to, I work on this camper pretty much almost daily, but I think I'm actually going to step aside for today, leave this mock-up in place, come out occasionally, look at it, think about it, and before I move on, make sure that this is exactly what I want. Uh, because from this point on, it, it's going to be harder and harder to make big changes. So I guess the psychology of that is I think there are times, I've always been a huge advocate of being consistent in terms of you know not letting a project lie too long. But I do think there is a value to occasionally kind of stepping back and... Uh, um, uh, you know, thinking about it and just sleeping on it. You know, we've heard that expression before. Um, I hope you guys don't mind this video. It's just kind of a free flow of my thought processes here. Um, but, uh, oh my gosh, I'm driving fast. But, uh, man, from an artistic perspective, though, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I think this is, listen, it's not going to be every, everybody's cup of tea. That's fine. Uh, it, I build them for myself, and I, I build them just being different sometimes and, and, and being creative, like, you know, not, I, I just love that. And, and this is, this is what I'm liking, but this is, I think it'd be a nice blend of, of creativity, uniqueness. I think curves are organic beauty. It's hard to define to me, uh, coupled with it. This is going to be functional. This is, this is going to be light. Uh, theoretically it should be very aerodynamic. I know, um, my impression of 8.0 
has been that it's been very aerodynamic. Um, and uh, yeah, functional. Let's go take a look at 8.0 though. So remember, remember this frontal shot here. I think 8.0 is beautiful too, don't get me wrong. But uh, you can see here, we just got the vertical walls rolling up right into that curve. Imagine what you're seeing there with that new one where that is cut at 45 and it loops around. It's gonna be pretty sexy, guys. I think that's gonna be pretty good looking. So <clears throat> thanks guys for watching. Let me know what you think.